Oh, oh hey, what's up? Baby shark. Hey, we're going fishing today. I'm just kidding. We're not actually going fishing, but we're gonna use an analogy today to help you find better clients. And today I wanna to ask you, what body of water are you fishing for new clients in? It's a great analogy, something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and the idea came to my mind today, and I wanted to break it down for you. So that's what we did. We broke it down nice and simple. And so without further ado, let's just go ahead and roll right into it. All right, so as you can see, I prepared myself, and I actually had this all written down. This all came straight out of my brain, so it wasn't like I took this from anywhere, but I wanted to get it out of my head and onto the board so I didn't forget anything because all of these things that I wrote on the board here are super, super important. So we're gonna go ahead and roll into it. But before we do, I need you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It helps me know that you're seeing this, that you appreciate this, and that this video helped you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate your support. So again, welcome back. My name is Adrian Boisel and you're watching the Adrian Graphics and Marketing channel. Today we were talking about finding better clients, finding people that can help you grow your business. If you're a creative, if you're a marketing agency, if you're a web designer, anybody in the creative space, that's what I'm here to help you do. And so a lot of you guys are fishing in the wrong places and the wrong bodies of water. And that's what I wanna help you realize and start to change within your business. I don't think it's a bad thing to start in a pond to learn how to fish. You're gonna be catching guppies and minnows. You're gonna hear us talk about that. And so starting in a small body of water like a pond, helping you get some practice before you go out and try to fail in some of the bigger areas because you are going to fail along your journey and it's better to fail in a pond than it is in a big large thing where you're gonna lose your reputation, you're gonna compromise yourself. So you wanna start small and work your way up. But as a starting place, I broke this down for you so we can jump right into it. So in a pond, when you're fishing in a pond, you're gonna catch, like I said, the minnows and the guppies. And this is gonna be the smaller client. In the business world, that's gonna be the companies that are doing between zero and one million dollars. It could be a half a million dollar company, it could be a quarter million dollar company. They may, maybe they're just doing 60, 70 thousand dollars a year, like my wife is. Then you're gonna have a company that's also doing anywhere between zero employees and 25 employees. And then as well, their marketing budgets are gonna be pretty small. I put $2,500 here as a kind of a high end budget for a small company. You will find some of those companies that have high ticket services, maybe a single attorney or a chiropractor, somebody that's willing to spend 2,500 bucks. But for the most part, I usually find myself in the thousand to $1,500 range for these small companies. That's usually their comfort zone of what they wanna spend on a monthly basis to grow their business. Now you gotta keep in mind, setting those expectations with these small companies is super important. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But when you have these realistic expectations, what kind of ROI would be acceptable for you, Mr. Customer? On a thousand dollars or a $1,500 a month budget, if you were to make $500 or a thousand dollars on top of the investment you made, would you be satisfied with that? If you're able to double your money, would that be good? If you were able to triple your money, would that be good? Understanding what their expectations are up front is gonna be really important to having a long-term relationship that can grow from being in a pond to going to the ocean, right? It's a, they're the fish. And so you wanna make sure that you're actually in these places that you're gonna be able to attract these types of clients starting off. Then as you start to gain some experience, you start to prove yourself, you get some testimonials, you get some recommendations, referral letters, things like that. Then you can start bringing in some of these and you can start fishing maybe once a week. Maybe you're fishing five days a week in your pond to start with, but then one day a week you go out and fish in the lake. And so you have that diversified approach after you've proven yourself, you've gained some more skills and you gave more confidence in what you're doing. Um, on top of that, if you look at this, what you're gonna find is in these smaller companies is they're gonna be more mom and pops the husband or the wife or both, or maybe an employee is, is probably gonna be you know, helping alongside of the owner and the, the boss is gonna be making the decision. You're the one, he's the one that you need to be talking to. As well as you're not gonna have a gatekeeper. The business owner is typically going to be the gatekeeper. We find this a lot in carpet cleaning. We find this a lot in many other businesses. So that's gonna be a big deal to understand that you can get directly to the business owner via email, via Facebook, via, uh, text messages via phone. So there's a lot of different ways. And then even face to face, I know that's been hard for a lot of businesses through COVID, but it's a great opportunity for you to meet the business owner and build that relationship with them and build that database because you never know, they may have friends who are in the lake or may have friends who are in the ocean. So don't discount these people. I don't wanna take anything away from starting small and working in a pond. It's not that this is a bad thing, but as you grow, you wanna be able to move along. 
The biggest thing with these small companies that will lose the client for you is not setting the right expectations. These expectations are so huge. How long can they expect an ROI? What type of guarantees do you offer? How, how much contact are you gonna have with that person? The communication, what, what kind of reporting are you gonna have? If you don't set these things up front and give them realistic expectations that you can actually meet, you're gonna lose that client in 30, 60, 90 days, and you're gonna work hard to get that client and it's gonna really mean nothing for you at the end of the day because chasing you're just chasing the next client. Okay, now moving on to the second part, which is the lake. This is where we're currently at. We have a lot of lake clients, but we're also moving into the ocean. So if you look at the lake, you're gonna to start to see bigger fish. You're gonna see bass and trout and catfish and stuff like that. And so these companies are doing anywhere between one to $20 million in sales usually. There's a little bit of give and take, maybe 25 million. These companies are typically gonna have, because they have such huge revenues, they're gonna to typically have about 25 plus employees, maybe 27, 26 in that range. And their marketing budgets are gonna to start to increase. They're gonna be at 2,500 to $50,000 range. You might be able to get somebody for 10, 20, 30 grand. These are great companies, usually bigger law firms, bigger uh, businesses, bigger chiropractors, bigger companies, construction, whatever service vertical that you're really in, you're gonna start finding those bigger ones. The downsides and some of the challenges and things you need to know is although they have bigger budgets, you are now treading into an area where they have gatekeepers, they have receptionists, they have uh, assistants, maybe even more than one gatekeeper, but for sure at least one gatekeeper. So you're gonna have to make friends with that gatekeeper. That's super important that you make friends with them, that you build relationships with the gatekeeper. That's not just about going over them, but it's going to them and actually building that relationship and helping them win. If you can bring an opportunity to them and they can go deliver that to their boss and it makes them look good, it makes them feel good, it makes them know that they're contributing to their company, that's the approach you wanna take. So giving them a gift card, giving them some education, making a friend, and not just trying to continuously go around them. I see a lot of people struggle with that, and that's not something I want you to do. So I wanna make sure that you respect the gatekeeper, that you value the gatekeeper, they're there for a reason, okay? And then the third thing is, is the two to four call close. What you're gonna find is because you're shooting for these larger budgets, these companies are gonna take more time to make a decision. You're gonna first have to explain your program and kind of build some connection with them up front. Then you're gonna kind of get a data assessment as well of what it is gonna take. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to move into, okay, what's the next steps? Let's sit down for one more conversation or two more conversations or three more conversations so you can talk to your partners, talk to your team. So it just takes a little bit more time to nurture that relationship and to get that sale. So you gotta be ready to commit two weeks to a month, maybe even three months, maybe 90 days for that deal to happen. And so those are kind of some of the challenges. And then number four is you have multiple decision makers. Maybe you have a partnership, maybe you have more than just a husband and wife, there's multiple people in the company, managers, sales managers, all these different people that are involved. And then the other thing that they really expect is I noticed that these large companies have really big expectations in getting stuff done quickly. Because they're putting out so much more money, they want results faster. So you're gonna have to make sure that you have a bigger team with the, along with the bigger budgets to bring in more people to get things done quicker. This is an area that I've had to learn personally as I've been dealing with companies in this range, learning how to produce the results that they want faster. So it's more of a quality versus quantity approach compared to the pond. Now moving into the last section here, and this is really important because this is the direction I'm moving in. I'm focusing in a lot. So if you have any advice, maybe something I didn't include in here, please drop a comment and let me know. But these are the companies that are going from 20 to 100 million plus. These are big companies like uh, Coca-Cola, Budget Blinds, Safeway. These are huge companies with massive teams, board of directors, chairmen of the board, people that have to take a long time to make those decisions. They do have large budgets, 50 employees plus, and large budgets of over 50 grand. Some companies like Quicken Loans, things like that, they're spending $200,000 plus a month on their marketing. So you're gonna have these large budgets to work with, and if you land one of these, you got more meat on the bone, but it takes a lot longer to get them. There's a lot more work involved, and you typically have to have a pretty big team to be able to handle that kind of work. So you wanna start ramping up to that over some time once you've gotten really good skills, you've been able to prove yourself with great testimonials. This is not something you just come right out and do. And then you got multiple gatekeepers. So you have a receptionist, an executive assistant, then a manager, then you have the owner, and then you have like the chairmen of the boards or the, the CEOs of the company. So you have to go through multiple tiers. And so because of that, uh, these sales cycles really probably take the longest. They can take up to six months. I've heard of some people taking a year to close a deal because that ties into this and that's the time of year. The time of year when you approach these big companies that are in the ocean, the whales and the sharks, you need to be careful for the sharks. Um, but when the time of year that you approach these guys, 
you need to make sure that you're actually getting them at the right time. So October, November, December, when they're in these meetings before the beginning of the year and making decisions on what their budget's gonna be, hey, we got a 10% marketing budget, let's put $30,000 towards social media, let's put $10,000 towards search, let's put $100,000 towards print or whatever. So getting into those meetings before they do those and making those final decisions is gonna help you land those types of clients. And then you're gonna have a different contact method, right? Because you're gonna have multiple people that you're working with, you're gonna have strings of emails. Typically the contact structure is gonna be more email driven, back and forth, building that relationship, sending some value, and just nurturing that relationship over that longer period of time and that cycle, that sales cycle that we're talking about. And so, like I said, there's gonna be a large group of decision makers, board of directors, management, you know, lower level team, and there's gonna be a lot of people involved in that. So that really is in a nutshell of what I wanted to cover with you, but there's a couple things that I wanna point out here at the end of this is what bait are you using? There are a lot of people that are fishing in these different ponds. Like if you're fishing in a pond and you're selling something that's $5,000, that's not irresistible to those guys. They can't afford that. So you gotta make sure you use the right bait, using lower level offers, doing things that are cheap, that are affordable for them to be able to actually do and take advantage of, versus going into the lake, you do some more trip wires, you're doing some more advanced funnels. And then with this, these people are already really relationship driven, so building those channel partnerships, doing things like that. There's some different strategies and some bait that you need to use. You may have to pay people to help you open the doors to these companies. You may have to incentivize people and pay people a good percentage of what the initial sale is gonna be in order to get those relationships built. And then the, the last thing I wanted to share with you is the bottom feeders. There are bottom feeders in every body of water. It's really important to remember that the different bodies of water are all gonna have these bottom feeders. People who want everything yesterday, they wanna take advantage of your time, they don't appreciate your talent, they wanna minimize what you do, um, and they just are trying to take advantage of your time, your effort, your energy, and your talent. So you wanna watch out for those, watch out for those red flags, the low ballers, the things like that, people who are looking for super short, short-term results very quickly that are looking for huge results very short term. That's really important for you to understand as well is you gotta be realistic and you gotta watch out for these red flags. This is an area that I've struggled with because I see the best in people and I see the red flags and I go, oh, it's okay. I'll be able to overcome that. I don't think that's gonna come up. And if it does come up, it'll be all right because I've already talked about it. Just because you talk about it in the beginning doesn't mean that we're gonna remember it. So I know there's a lot of information here. I hope this really helps you. There's a lot to really take in. Um, I'm gonna put the description of this stuff in the description of the video as well. So if you need that, please let me know. And again, drop a comment, introduce yourself. Uh, I just want you to help. I wanna give you more help in getting better clients, bringing in a better type of client for you and being able to fit the right client into your business of where you're at along your journey. So I hope that helps you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. And as always, keep looking up.